Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about a really tough topic, so I do want to offer a trigger warning. We're going to be learning more about what to do if someone you love tells you that they've been a victim of sexual assault. You know, how can we support our loved ones that might be impacted by this trauma? You know, particularly if something is triggering, you know, in the media, in a news story, you know, what can we do to support them? There's many things. I think start by believing the person who's yes. sharing that with you. Yeah. Um, you might be the first person they're telling. You, they might have, that, that's a giant step to take to tell you that. So start by believing what they're saying, hearing them. Um, if it's a child that discloses to you, stay calm. Like don't get wound up and add to the stress, but receive the information and really listen to what they're sharing with you. Thank them for sharing that with you and trusting you with it. Um, and I think then accessing resources, you know, you might not hold all the answers, but reaching out to places like CBIC, the Children's Advocacy Centers, places that can help you with resources, whether that's reaching out to law enforcement to report the crime or getting support from an organization like CBIC or another therapist to work through that. I really love, you know, and I, I hear you all even in our working life say, you know, thank you so much for sharing that. But I, I mean, even starting there, like having the courage to share, I think it helps those of us that we all probably know someone who's been impacted trauma or maybe we've been there ourselves. Another thing I would say is if someone is just closing something to you, um, I think Teresa made a really good point of not freaking out. Mm -hmm. I right. think, especially if it's your own kid, it can be really traumatizing your, yes well. your inclination could be oh yeah. my goodness and and i totally understand that but that can be even more difficult for your child right if mom's upset or dad's yes. upset so trying to stay as calm as you can and getting to the root of those emotions and validating those emotions i'm so sorry that happened that must have been so hard for you i'm here for you we're gonna get you help that's the best thing you can say because it's okay to not know what to do all right. Most people aren't going to know what to do. Um, and you have so many emotions that can come up at those times, but just validating and supporting that attachment with your child is, is really the most powerful thing that you can do in those moments. Um, and then as Tree said, leaning on those resources, those resources are not just there for your child. They're there for you too, as a caregiver to help you navigate what's happening because it's not just a trauma for your kid it's a collective trauma it is. as well it's, it impacts the whole family yeah. and i you know we try to to remind folks that we're here for you after the uh, initial incident you know if something bubbles up five years later i mean that's why we're here yes so. and working with parents too i like to remind parents too when these things happen to children it can be so easy for parents to think i have failed as a parent i'm the worst parent ever <laughs> And I can understand why you'd feel that way, right? But unfortunately, as Teresa said earlier, this is a pervasive issue. Child sexual abuse is something that happens. And so because, you know, just because this happened, it doesn't make you a terrible parent. It doesn't make you a terrible human. It doesn't mean you don't love your kid. In fact, if this happens and you report and you get your child help, that shows that you're a good parent, right? You're doing all you can to help your child heal. Um, so I wouldn't let that shame and the stigma surrounding child sexual abuse, I wouldn't let that stop you from accessing resources. And I do wanna, you know, you mentioned that CBIC services are there if things bubble up later too. And I think with, with child sexual abuse, especially as a child, develops and grows older, those feelings might come up and they might view the abuse differently than they did when they were five. Yep. Once they hit the teen years and puberty, they might need to come back to therapy and reprocess that because things have changed. I think differently about my body now. And, um, you know, so just we're there all along the way and uh, can offer services, like Mara said, both to the child and the caregiver. I feel so lucky to work with you. Thanks so much. Thank you.